Hot tents are really popular right now. My thoughts? Meh. I'm gonna give you five reasons why I am not buying a hot tent. So there are some hot tent guys out there that are ready to pounce on me right now. Come at me, bro. Take a big breath, relax, sit back, have a drink, enjoy the video. You can camp any way that you want. But these are the five reasons why I am not going to rush out and buy a hot tent. I've been on two winter camping trips this year in the Boundary Waters canoe area where hot tents were used. The first was over New Year's Eve, we went up to Whale Lake and Eagle Mountain, which is the highest point in Minnesota. We had to hike in about three miles. Most of that was through deep snow on a trail and not on a lake. The temperatures dropped down to about negative 15. The second trip was just a few weeks ago where we went up and we went to a campsite on South Hegman Lake uh, it was only about a mile hike in. Uh, there was a big hill and most of it was on a lake. Number five is I think when hot tenting, people spend a lot more time in their tent. It's a really easy and convenient thing to do is, you know, when you're thinking about going to bed, you may go to bed a little bit earlier because you know you can start that stove and stay warm in your tent versus traditional camping where you stay out by the campfire until you're ready to go to sleep in order to stay warm and then you go to bed. And it's the same thing in the morning. You wake up, you stoke up that fire in your hot tent, you probably make your breakfast on top of that stove and you just hang out in your tent a little bit longer before you have to go out and brave the cold temperatures outside. And I value my time when I go camping to be outside and to not be spent in a tent. Sitting here alone by the campfire. The rest of them are in the hot tent back there. Number four is it is a lot heavier. Now, hot tents come in various different materials, whether it be sil poly, sil nylon, to the heavier canvas. The stoves comes in different sizes as well as materials from titanium to stainless steel, maybe even a cast iron. The long and the short of it is it's going to weigh a lot more. Anywhere from probably 25 pounds up to 50, maybe even 75 pounds more than if you were just camping in a tent. Most likely you are going to be pulling that heavier weight in a pulk opposed to in a backpack, but it's still a lot of weight. So the last two trips that I went on, the first trip to Whale Lake, my buddy Rob had his hot tent and it was a three miles in, deep snow, kind of a rolling, rolling trail that wasn't very easy. And he stopped halfway. It almost killed him. He had to stop halfway. He started setting up camp before other people went back and helped him pull uh, the rest of that weight all the way into camp. On this last trip, we went to Whale Lake and my buddy Miyagi estimated that his pulk weighed 250 pounds. We know that we weren't going that far, so we had some extra gear in there. And most likely, when you do go hot tenting, you're gonna carry some extra gear like frying pans or uh, just great food that's going to weigh a lot more and that's going to add on to your your base weight above the tent and the stove but anyway Miyagi was about 250 pounds and we were helping push we were helping pull I mean this dude never gets tired and it was giving him all that he could handle so we had to help out but having all that extra weight makes it a little bit harder to get to camp opposed to sleeping in a hammock or a tent Number three is, it is a lot of work. Not only getting to camp, but once you get to camp, you have to set up your hot tent, and that takes a little bit more effort than a traditional tent or a hammock and a rain fly. 
So when you get there, this hot tent, oftentimes they're a little bit more robust, kind of a TP, maybe a little bit more complicated than a normal tent. You set that up and oftentimes uh, you have some bigger stakes since it's a bigger tent and you have to find the perfect spot where your stove can sit in the right spot in your tent on a perfectly level surface because you have to assemble the stove pipe which runs up from your stove through the top of your tent. So that needs to be lined up so not only when you put a pot on top of the stove that it's level, but that that stove pipe is running up uh, straight to go out of your tent. And oftentimes the ground underneath your stove melts and it throws your stove kind of off of to a different angle and you have to correct that to make sure that that stove pipe isn't leaning on your tent. So it's a little bit of, of uh, babysitting and a little bit of work. Once you have your hot tent set up, you're all ready to go, right? Relax in that nice warm tent, wrong. You are gonna have to get a lot of firewood and process a lot of firewood. So not only are you collecting firewood for that communal campfire outside, but you have to gather firewood for your stove inside of your tent. And these stoves aren't very big, so you're gonna have to cut your logs a little bit shorter. Most likely you're gonna be splitting the wood so that little diameter fits through the hole and burns well inside of your stove. And often getting firewood in the deep snow of winter can be a little bit more challenging. In fact, I know some guys who have actually brought a battery powered chainsaw on their hot tenting trips to hot lessen tent. the task of processing all of that firewood for their hot tent. Number two is the stove takes constant attention. So you finally make that big heavy struggle walk into camp, set up that big tent, gather all that firewood, process all that firewood, you're ready to chill in your hot tent and stay warm and relax, right? Maybe even take a nap. So you take a nap, you wake up an hour and a half later, guess what? Your stove is probably out. Your tent might still be warm, but your stove is out. The truth is, is since that stove is small, the firewood is small and split, it burns quickly. You have to keep on feeding it. So every uh, hour and a half, two hours, you're gonna have to wake up and uh, put wood in that fire. So if you are planning to stay warm all night and keep your tent warm all night, you're gonna have to wake up every two hours and put new wood in that stove or else it's gonna burn out. So you have that option of waking up every two hours all night long, you know, three, four times, or you can let your stove burn out. I think this is what most hot tent guys do is they let, you know, they go in there and they fall asleep when it's warm, but they let it burn out and it gets cold in the middle of the night and they wake up in a cold tent. This means that they have to pack a cold weather sleeping bag and pads, just like a normal uh, camping adventure, which that heavy sleeping bag and heavy pads are also gonna add to the base weight and make things a little bit more difficult walking in. And finally, number one is the cost. Just like any high quality backpacking gear, it costs a lot of money. So first of all, you're gonna have to buy that hot tent. Hot tent probably starts at $200, can go up to, I don't know, the Cadillac's $1,200. And you're also gonna have to buy the stove, which again, maybe bare bones, little one, you can start at $200, but most of them are gonna be three, four, five, probably, you can go up to $1,500 if you want a really good big one. So it costs a lot of money. I already have a negative 20 degree quilt and my hammock gear is all set for camping out in the cold. So I have to look at how many times would I actually use that hot tent and would it be a good return on investment for me to purchase that? I will concede that there are some great things about hot tents. Number one is it is very nice to have a warm, dry, sheltered area right before you go to bed so you can strip down and get in your sleeping bag. The same thing in the morning. It's easier to get out of that sleeping bag if you stoke that fire up and you can get out in a warm area and put your boots and your clothes on. 
Number two is the stoves for keeping your tent warm are often flat on the top and can be used as a cooking stove. So you can put a frying pan or a pot on there, make some bacon, some sausage, some eggs. Uh, you can put a pot on there to melt snow for drinking water. It's very convenient. My friends also have racks and hooks where they can hang clothes or wet items above the stove to let them dry out. And the third item is if you have noobs, it's very comforting for them to know that they don't have to spend four days in negative 20 degree weather. Uh, they have that place to come in and rest, that warm shelter to rest. And, you know, if something does go bad, somebody gets hurt, uh, it's a little bit easier to work on them and, and, and help them in a warm area. I think hot tents are good in four circumstances. The first is when it's really, really super bitterly cold. For me, that would be if the highs are never going above zero degrees Fahrenheit and the lows are constantly below negative 20. That would be nice to have the hot tent, not only for in the morning and at night, but maybe you don't want to spend as much time at that campfire if it's windy out. And, uh, you know, if you aren't having that campfire and you're just processing wood for the hot tent, it may be a little bit more efficient. Number two is if you're walking a short distance. It's basically winter car camping. So in this instance, you're not walking very far. You don't have to pull your pulk very far. You probably have extra time to set up your tent and uh, gather firewood. You may be buying firewood from a gas station and having it in the trunk of your car. In that sort of case, if you have the expectation to just be sitting around in your hot tent all weekend, that would be fine. Number three is bigger group Arctic expedition type treks. So I've seen videos, I've seen pictures, but I've never done this personally and frankly, I'd like to. What they do is they do something completely different than my winter camping trips. They actually cover a lot of miles. You know, it'll be a four day trip and they cover 50, 60 miles which is pretty difficult and unheard of in the winter with snow and, and the different conditions. And why that excites me is obviously I like to cover a lot of miles in the summer and I don't do it in the winter and they do that and they do it with hot tents. So if they have five to 10 people, they have these long toboggans and it's planned out in advance, split up the weight between, you know, they have these big canvas tents and big stoves where probably six people sleep in a tent and they split all that up, you know, the food up, all the weight, and they're very organized. So you're walking most of the day, but you still have to set up that big hot tent and that stove and gather firewood and, and, and get water, all that sort of stuff. So they're very organized where everybody has responsibilities. Everybody's carrying certain things. You make that 10 mile trip, you set up, you rest in the hot tent, you know, you sleep well and you wake up the next day and you do the same thing. So in those sort of conditions, I would think a hot tent would be nice. And the fourth one is a solo trip where I'm just going to go out there and I'm going to read a book and I'm going to relax and just sit in my hot tent the whole time. <laughs> Who are we kidding? <laughs> Me relax? Right. Now, I prefer to sleep in a hammock, whether that be in the summer or the winter. Now, I know that they sell hot tents for hammocks, but from what I've seen is because of the hammock, those hot tents are larger, and I think that it would be hard to keep that bigger area warm with that small stove. So I've camped in my hammock in negative 27 with a wind chill of negative 47 degrees Fahrenheit, and I kept perfectly warm while I was sleeping. So I think my hammock setup is better for cold, maybe not the super bitter, bitter cold, but I prefer my hammock when it's cold because I think that it is lighter, it's easier, it's more comfortable. Uh, you spend less time on camp chores and splitting wood, and it promotes more time in the group with your friends. So speaking of my friends, I'm kind of a contrarian. 
and I went to this thing locally with some of my friends called a hot tent hoedown, and I asked them to change my mind on hot tenting. So Sam, tell me why hot tents don't suck. Well, they're a little, a little warmer than just sleeping on the, on the ground. And uh, I'm not buying it. It might uh, keep you keep you warm by chopping wood all night. You want to chop wood all night? Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> feed the fire. You have a little stove you can cook on. So you don't want to sleep. You just want to feed a fire all night. <laughs> oh, yeah. Great idea. I'm completely sold. Hot tents are for wimps. I couldn't agree more. You are a wise man. I'm here with Danny from Superior Gear. They make hammocks. And uh, I think that we agree on one thing, mm. that hot tents suck. <laughs> you can't change my mind, can you? <laughs> well, I think they're cool. It's just a different thing. I, I like the simplicity of just setting up my hammock. I don't have to chop wood. And uh, maybe keeping your face warm is, is a little more of a challenge in the hammock. Um, and getting up in the morning, you're getting out in the cold right away. But, um, but hot tents have some cool, cool advantages. So, well, come on. Depends what you're looking for. Before we started the video, you agreed with me that hot tents suck. <laughs> <No. clears throat> I mean, I, I, I like quick and simple. I guess we put it that way. Quick, simple, and light is kind of what I like doing. And you know, you could you could make the case that hot tents are give you a little more warmth, comfort, for sure. But is it worth the effort? That that's the question. For me, not yet. I haven't Agreed. gone that route. Agreed. Yeah. What? But I'm not knocking the people who do it. Okay. <laughs> it's good stuff. I am. They suck. <laughs> How you doing? Greetings. Hot tents suck, Mr. Uh, Rob. I'm curious. Change my mind. I'm curious. Do you have a license to be out here? to talk no. about these things? No. Or are you just here trying to dr stir no. up drama? Like what's your yeah, actual exactly. point here? Come I mean, what me, do you bro. actually know about hot tents to form the opinion that they suck? Hot tents are very heavy. They're a lot of work. Heavy compared to they're what? for wusses. For what? Heavy compared to what? A hammock. A hammock? Yeah, sleep in a hammock. It weighs, what, three pounds versus your hot tent that weighs but 40? But it's not heated. What do you need heat for? I have Where's 40... your Where's your hot hammock suck sign? Because hot ha what is a hot hammock, Rob? I don't know. Changed my mind about it. You ever heard of a down quilt? Peter! Yes. So, all right. Hot tents don't suck because these things are getting a lot more people outside camping in the wintertime. Not everyone is hammock savvy, but I know the merits of a hammock. But way better having a hot tent than a cold tent. If I'm going to be out in, a, in an environment like this, and let's say I'm doing some day hikes and I get hot and sweaty, yeah. I have, I have a, a place to, to so, warm up so and dry out. So tell me this, Rob. If you were to go to a place like, oh, I don't know, Whale Lake, and you had to pull a hot tent in there. Yeah. How much do you think that your pulk weighed and how much fun did you have pulling it in? Well, on my recent trips, it, it wasn't that much fun at all, but that's called type two fun. You know what you're in for. You know, I, I don't need lightweight everything just to be a bitch and not be able to pull my own weight. <laughs> I know what I'm getting myself into. Maybe we should re uh, review the film from that day and see how Rob felt about yeah. pulling a pulp. Yeah, it sucks, but afterwards <laughs> when I got the tent set up, super glad I did. Rob arrived at camp. He's pretty tuckered out. Mike went back and helped him. Rob's sled's a little bit wider, a little bit heavier than mine, so he really struggled. But he got here. He's burning in a stove gonna try to set up his hot tent for the first time I'm you know you have to embrace the suck something that you should probably learn about and I'll tell you I what. hang out with you don't <laughs> I <laughs> welcome hot tents suck changed my mind well seeing as how you weren't actually invited to this event <clears throat> like I need an invitation I don't know you know hot tents are a thing it's uh, they're a thing, all right. They're they're, they're a thing. So I, this is my first year with a hot tent. But I tell you what, and and, and tell me if I'm wrong here. You got you a big, you got a big group of people, right? 
Okay. And I'm talking about my hot tent here. Okay. Right? The a one nice, that weighs about 60 pounds. A nice communal place. Yeah. Right? Where yeah. you can eat and you can you can get warm and in inclement weather you have a place to kind of hunker down as a group. Okay. That's nice. Okay. Right? You can't do that in a hammock. And what we haven't had on a trip is really bad weather where everyone's got to go to their own hammocks and then you lose the social aspect of it. So for me, I will agree with you that hot tents are heavy. They're a pain in the butt. It's a lot of work. But in certain circumstances, I think hot tents have their merit. Last year, Boundary Waters, negative 27 degrees. Yep. We didn't have a hot tent, did we? We did. It but wasn't we quite... spent most of our time out by the campfire. We did, but we also didn't have really bad weather either. Negative it was negative 27. 27, but it wasn't. We didn't have a yeah. blizzard. Yeah. We didn't have heavy wind. Yeah. If I don't mind the blizzard, but the wind. Yes. And the only thing that saved us was the tarp that Rob bought. So, so I think my opinion is, in certain circumstances, it's warranted, but they are a pain in the butt. Hot tents are nice as a warming house as long as you don't get stuck in them. Yes, I agree. And I'll tell you what, this year you guys convinced us to make a fire outside of the hot tent because we would have stayed in there. It was nice and cozy, they're great, but having the communal fire outside, that's a winner. But hot tents have their place. Hot tents suck, bro. No, they don't. No, hot they don't. tents suck. No, they don't. I'll fight you. Bro. I'll fight you. <laughs> <laughs> So this is all for fun. I have a lot of buddies that like hot tents. I'm just not ready to invest the money to buy a hot tent myself. Hey, if you like winter camping videos, summer camping videos, outdoor adventure, occasional gear videos, and general stupidity, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, punch the bell notification, check out my photos on Instagram and Facebook. I have merch available in Teespring. Hey, you never know. If you're a hot tent seller and a stove seller and you're watching this video and you think that I should try hot tenting, go ahead and send me some free crap and I'll take it out and maybe you'll convert me and I'll do a video on it. All right, enough of me begging for free stuff. Thanks for watching. We'll see you out on the trail.